So we spoke about the size of this market and we spoke about uh, you know, how attractive it is. There are different numbers floating around. Last I picked up some data was, they spoke about food service market being $100 billion in India, 3% organized, and expected to be 175 in the next seven to eight years. I don't know how far true those numbers are, to be honest, but if you take any stretch of imagination, the numbers are sizable. Just for the audience, the total private equity funding last year in this industry was under 500 crores. So we are under 500 crores of funding in a market which is 100 billion or say half the number, 50 billion for a moment, is abysmally small. Now, given this large market, right, and given that we're sitting with this audience over here at the Indian Restaurant Congress, what is your view, Rahul, uh, this is Rahul Chaudhary, on the opportunity in the food service segment in India? Uh I would say it's a spectrum of opportunities. So, you know, based on which, which spectrum you want to play on, uh, you can go with, I've seen a lot of proposals around kiosk uh, kind of model, then there are these QSR kind of model, then there are, you know, uh, casual dining, fine dining, and so on. So, it depends on which spectrum you want to play. I think there is opportunity everywhere. Uh, obviously, higher you go around price point and, you know, size of the format and all, the harder it becomes to scale because personal attention becomes important. Uh, Rahul, what do you think of this entire perspective? Uh, I completely agree with you. The market potential is immense. Unfortunately, there are not too many direct investing opportunities because the sizes of companies, uh, which are, let's say, 50 crore plus in revenue, are, are few and far between. So we've also adopted a strategy similar to what Himendra mentioned, that we, we look at you know, the back end because scalability opportunities there are immense and valuations are also uh, a, a little more uh, attractive. And it is a complete surrogate on uh, uh, the, the, the food uh, service industry. So it's, it's a segment, I think, which holds immense uh, potential in, in these days. Harsh, could you share your perspective on this? We do have a startup scheme under a risk capital fund where we give assistance up to one crore, this concept of security is not there. Another uh, area which should be uh, functions in is we also act as a fund of funds. So like we have invested in Himen's uh, funds, we have invested in very small funds which are doing startups and also in a way SIDBI reaches out to the startups through its fund of fund activities also. Want to put another question out to uh, uh, Himendra. I mean, do you think the market is getting overcrowded? Too many players, too many new concepts, marginal differentiation. You know, you spoke about uh, value plays, you know, looking at opportunities. Do you think that's actually ha happening right now? If you look at most of the brands in India, except for coffee chains and except for some of the multinational brands, the very, very few brands which have been able to sort of successfully uh, launch in other regions. Most brands are, brand is still regional or local in nature. So what we see as of now, it's more of a penetration game. You know, you can penetrate a particular concept or a particular market, but when it comes to pan-India approach, I would say they are still very, very few, even in this crowded market, uh, who can do it successfully. So I think, you know, we we'll, we'll look, look at more from the execution point of view, for example, centralized kitchen concept. You know, a lot of people uh, talk about it, but we have seen even with centralized kitchen, you there is a, there's a, there's a, there's a particular number of restaurants you can reach out to. You know, you have no, so you, are you saying the market is not overcrowded or it's overcrowded? Uh, overcrowded, uh, I would say, you know, in terms of... Or it's a, evolving. It's evolving. But from investor okay. perspective, there is a huge potential. Uh, you know, but if you're looking to fund a company which has two or three restaurants, probably it's overcrowded. If, if you're looking for, for, com for formats which are like 30, 40 restaurants, the number goes down drastically. So I think that's where the challenge is. So from... Organ unorganized to organized, you'll find people scaling up and putting larger formats or larger number of retail stores in, in, the, in the food space and therefore create scale, I assume. And uh, the market seems to be moving in the right direction because every such market evolves, right? Uh, as opposed to sometimes people think that too many players are in the market doing similar formats. Successful guys will emerge at the end of the day which formats will emerge, 
uh, what do investors like? Rahul, you referred to uh, QSR and casual dining, if I'm not mistaken. But you've had, uh, you know, can you, can you talk about a bit about your own experience on which formats you favor the most and why? Even in a restaurant business, I would say backend is equally important and at times more important, which is around how do you get your processes in place, you know, how do you choose the location right, is your rental, rental is one of the biggest issue, I think, in most of the retail formats in India. So we want to discuss supply side separately, okay. but just purely on the formats. Is there yeah. any specific format? So I would say, uh, you know, something which is large market is always attractive in that sense, North Indian food, South Indian food, Chinese food. These are the three, I would say, top three formats. And then there is these, you know, American food, which I would, or Italian in some sense, which is the pizzas and the burgers. How do you uh, classify the cafes, the cafe coffee days and the yeah. baristas? Where would they fall under? So that, that was my, you know, the last segment that I was going to talk about, which is around the cafe and the coffee business. Uh, where I would say it is not just coffee, but food also that starts mattering. So I would call these are the four or five large markets as we know today. Now there are people who do Mexican, Thai, you know, uh, and other cuisines. I still don't think, you know, it is easy to scale those kind of cuisines. And then you end up hence having multi-cuisine format uh, companies also. Any perspective, Himindra, from your side on the formats which work? The investment that we've evaluated in the past, uh, you know, most brands are looking to become multi-format. One thing I want to emphasize... I assume you invest in food courts. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good concept. But what we like definitely is home delivery component. What we have seen, the formats which are more uh, profitable, usually have a good home delivery component. So we typically evaluate that, uh, that particular aspect. Harsh, if you look at QSR, cafes, fine dining, pubs, bars, casual, if you choose between these formats, and I know there'll be lots of members in the audience who do one or more of these. So for their benefit, I want to put out your perspective as to among these formats, which were the top two. See, earlier, all the banks, including SIDBI, had this concept that if you're financing a hotel, there should be land, there should be a building, you know, so you have good, solid assets. But now we have realized that for this kind of hotels, so you require, they require a repayment period of say 12 to 15 years. Which That's nobody true. Is, now the new chains which are coming up, they are leasing out the cold shells for a period of 30 years and all, and the room cost uh, goes down drastically. So we are concentrating more on those kind of projects now. The uh, branded uh, franchise chains uh, have a much higher survival rate, right? I think Samir, you said 70%. Uh, in the first five years, whereas the sort of the non-branded or the non-franchised standalone kind of concept, it's the opposite. It's, uh, it's a 70% failure rate. Uh, Rahul, Rahul Rai, would you favor someone creating homegrown brands, but then they own the IP, they create the formats, they tailor made to India, as opposed to someone tying up with a global chain or a regional chain trying to get the brand into India? What is, what is more favored with you? The answer that I gave was for the first option, if somebody were to create his own brand, and, and that is the strategy to use that you start with a few company-owned stores. On the other hand, uh, taking uh, you know, the brand rights of an international brand has also worked for several people. Uh, the, the revenue profile is different, but it is a somewhat de-risk model, and given that you know, the concepts are proven in, in several cases, it, it, it's something that uh, people can look at. We are comfortable looking at both options. Okay. Rahul, from your perspective, any preferences? So, uh, it's a bit of a risk return uh, issue. Uh, as an investor, if given a choice of investing only in one of the two, I would invest in a owned IP branded, Indian branded format. Uh, mainly because if you, if you scale it, the valuations and the value that you will create will be much better than what you can do with a foreign brand. Foreign brand has its own advantages, you know, you get the process, hopefully the brand is already known in India, but it has its own disadvantages because you never know what kind of tailoring you need to do around process, food. So you go through a learning curve, assuming, you know, the first recipe is right. Whereas a homegrown concept always starts with the belief that I don't know anything. So, uh, you know, I would favor the Indian one.